Hey, it's Ted here. I'm in the uh, engine lab here at the college working on that third part of back fitting an electric fuel pump onto an older carbureted engine. So if you have a mechanical fuel pump that has failed, uh, marine rated, and the component is NLA, um, Carter doesn't make it anymore, then there's this back fit of a Carter electric fuel pump. You can use other electric fuel pumps, but this one's primarily used with um, fuel injected engines and carbureted engines. So I'll show you the part three. This is the wiring part. This is the kind of more interesting part. So let's get going. What did I install? I installed the pump. I've installed a pressure switch and I've teed off of that for the actual mechanical gauge. That's your sending unit for your oil pressure. So I ended up uh, choosing a three wire switch um, it is labeled. I don't know if I can zoom in close enough, but you might be able to see it. And there is some letters on the connectors. Uh, that one says I. The red one is S. And the back one is P for pump. So the pump your uh, S is for your start and I is for your ignition. So the way I wired it up was I took this relay. It's very similar to the starter relay. So I purchased an aftermarket one and it has the uh, five wire relay. So the white wire is the excitation for the pulling coil. You have a ground. I ran that ground around here to the back of the engine block. So we have that. Um, so the pull-in circuit's the big thing to think about is we have to figure out how are we going to energize that relay. So let's kind of look at the rest of how that's wired. So I need power for the pump itself. So I've run the pump wire up here, found a nice piece of pink and white wire, tied that into the solenoid off the blue wire. Unfortunately, I didn't have any good 12-gauge blue wire, so I picked pink and white. So that is ultimately going to be power into the relay, out of the relay to the pump. Where do I get power from for the relay? So what I ended up doing was I came up here under the engine and I found the 50 amp breaker, which is the main breaker that feeds the key switch. And I'm going to steal that power off of that 50 amp breaker and run that down because it's a short run. Um, and it's 12 gauge wire, so that breaker will trip if a 12 gauge three strand wire uh, shorts to ground, which I seriously doubt, but it's possible. Um, so that's your feed and your power circuit to your pump. Um, what I did was I ended up just running around the back of the pump and I ran a ground wire off the back bolt here and I went to the bottom of the pump and I attached that there so I have my ground. The other thing I did was, because it's upside down, I labeled it with an indelible magic marker so I couldn't mix up which wire goes where. All right, the uh, excitation circuit. So now what we need to do is excite um, that relay and energize it. So the way that I wired it up, and it's pretty straightforward, especially with the three wire one, is I have the S terminal for the starter. And what I ended up doing was I'm going to come off my starter solenoid and what I've done is I've disconnected the starter solenoid wire that comes from the starter slave relay here. So that gets power from the key switch, energizes this relay. This relay then sends power down and energizes the starter solenoid, which sends power into the starter. So I'm going to piggyback off that wire, and I've made a connection here, and I'm going to connect those two to that starter relay in the back. So those are the small yellow and red wires. For the ignition circuit, what I did was I took, um, for the ignition wire, I come off of that purple wire and I ran around and luckily on this engine, there is what's known as the ignition bypass circuit on the starter solenoid. So when the starter solenoid plunger comes up, it makes contact with the battery cable. This, ener this is energizing the solenoid, so that pulls it up, but it makes contact with this terminal, the large terminal, which sends power into the starter, but it also makes contact with this ignition bypass wire, which sends power up to the positive side of the coil so you get the best, hottest coil voltage during cranking.
So during cranking, but then when you disengage the starter, that wire still has continuity with the ignition coil. So I'm taking that purple wire, which is from the key switch, and I'm gonna run that up through my pressure switch. And then that is gonna ultimately go out my white wire, which goes into the relay, which energizes a relay. So during cranking, this wire gets energized from the starter solenoid off the slave relay. After the engine starts and you build oil pressure, that switch closes and it opens the circuit for the start circuit. So this switch is a normally closed switch for the starter circuit, which when then when you build oil pressure, that will open. And it's a normally open switch for the ignition circuit. So this will not have continuity with the relay until oil pressure builds. So you have starter circuit continuity, you have an on circuit there while it's cranking, and while the engine's at rest, the ignition's on, but the engine is cranking, that circuit has power. When you build oil pressure, that portion of the switch opens and the ignition portion closes. So it's a make break switch, it's kind of like you have three terminals inside, you make contact here, oil pressure builds, you make contact with these two and you open this one. So it's a simple way to backfit that. Now what I wanted to do is just give you a quick demo. Uh, to make sure that this is gonna work, I wanna hear that pump run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie these two wires together real quick and then I'm gonna turn the key on and we'll listen for the pump. Okay, so I got these two wires tied together. That's going to be from the starter solenoid wire from the key switch, and this is going to be the wire that's going to run up to the oil pressure switch. So it goes to a, I ran it through a diode anyway. You really don't need one, but I did it just for demonstration. So what I did was I took a diode, you know, measured it for resistance. One way it has continuity, the other way it's blocked. Um, and then I've hooked that up to this red wire that goes to the S-terminal on the switch. So let's see if the pump runs. You should be able to hear it run when I turn a key on. So we're going to turn it to crank. Okay, there we go. Fuel pump runs. And the other thing I'm going to do is leave the key on. So that means that this circuit will be bypassed. So then I'm going to hook a 12-volt test light up. And I want to make sure that I don't have any power on any of these switches except for the ignition wire. <clears throat> Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I have my ignition wire here, which is my ignition feed wire, and I've pulled that off and I've run that over to the switch, so I wanna make sure that I have power at that terminal. My test light lights up. And then if I jump that wire over to the white wire, then that is going to make the pumps run as if I have oil pressure. So the oil pressure builds up. There we go. So. That's how, we're, how we have it wired up. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, I like the idea of the three wire oil pressure switch and then adding the second relay. And what's nice is the starter relay here. I've just taken that rubber grom and it was on the engine. And these are outboard motor mounts. If you're ever looking for them, they're pretty inexpensive. And it works great to support um, uh, a relay off of the engine. And it just happened to be there for the starter relay. So I just, tied off of it and then just tie wrapped it up. So uh, we'll get this thing running. I gotta put plugs in it and probably clean the carburetor out, but we'll get it running now, uh, maybe next week. Okay, here's a wiring diagram of what I just showed you, the wiring on the engine. Um, you have your key switch. Off your key switch, the ignition wire, your purple wire runs down through your engine harness, and that goes to the ignition coil, the alternator field wire, etc. Well, I'm gonna see if I don't have a purple wire that runs down through the engine harness, disappears in the harness, and ends up attaching to the starter solenoid on some engines. That's the I terminal for ignition bypass. I talked about that earlier. If you do not have that wire, then simply find a wire that's purple, you know, on the coil, and you're going to have to tie into that. Um, the alternator also has a field wire, which is purple. That also could be a place to tie in if you can get to it without, uh, you know, cutting into the harness too bad. So that is going to be the first part of getting, you know, power out of that ignition circuit.
and then that is going to run down to the I terminal on your oil pressure switch. So from there, that switch is normally open between I and P for the pump. So that part is open. Until oil pressure builds, that switch portion is open. The other third terminal is the S terminal. That terminal is your starter terminal. So your key switch in most marine applications, especially gasoline engines like we're working on, that wire runs down to the slave uh, starter relay or the slave solenoid, depending on model year. That's a small 16 gauge wire that energizes the relay and then a 10 gauge wire runs down to the S terminal, the small terminal on the starter. That's on the solenoid. So you have your battery cable here. The other cable goes into the starter. Those are the big heavy duty battery cables connections. We're talking about the yellow and red wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wire, make a new one, and I'm going to tie into that terminal. It's basically a ring terminal like I showed you. I put a diode in here just in case because I don't want any chance of voltage from this switch jumping from the ignition to the S terminal and back feeding into the starter because then the starter would engage while the engine was running. That's not a good thing. Um, it does work fine with a small diode that I put in there. There's several options for you guys to research and find a diode. Uh, crimp it in, shrink wrap it up real good, and then that is going to go to the S terminal. Now, the S terminal has continuity, so it's closed between S and P for the pump. That's with no oil pressure. When oil pressure builds, it moves the switch from this terminal to the I terminal. So this terminal S to P is closed when you start cranking the engine. When oil pressure builds, that connection opens and it switches over to the I terminal. Then you have voltage through from your ignition system over here into the relay. So now we have to put in a fuel pump relay. And the reason for that is because we need some way to switch from a low current through this switch to a higher current. So this is gonna be a 12 gauge wire minimum. Um, I'm not sure what the pump runs, if it runs 10 amps, 15 amps, um, but anyway, I would run a 12 gauge minimum and fuse it, probably for whatever the rating of the pump is. 12 gauge wire, type three that's tinned as marine grade wire will carry 50 amps. So I pulled that off of the 50 amp circuit breaker on the engine. That's where I got my power. Then that runs into terminal 30, which is gonna, when this solenoid is energized, it's gonna close between 30 and 87. That's gonna send power into the pump. The pump's gonna run. I have to energize it. So that's where that P terminal comes in. That's where the current's gonna run through this switch. It's gonna energize the pull-in coil of that. And I have a ground on 86. So I grounded that to the block like I showed you. Heavy duty 12 gauge ground wire goes to the block and there you go. There's your wiring diagram for uh, backfitting an electric fuel pump to an old carbureted engine that has a mechanical fuel pump. So if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button, you know, and uh, hit that like button and I'll talk to you soon. It also will be purple. So On the back of the alternator, there's a field wire.
place is off the field wire and you can run that wire and you can tie that off and run that around and put that into that switch.